What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. I almost fucking forgot the day of the week. <laughs> I swear to God, my mind was telling me Thursday for some odd-ass reason. I don't even know, but I'm just thinking, I'm like, no, yesterday was Sunday. Happy Monday. Happy July 1st. <laughs> that goes to show what type of fucking weekend and week it has been. Um, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Watching GH lately is like, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm on, I feel like I'm on my uh, on a very thin thread with this show. I'm hanging on by a very thin thread because what I saw today and what I continue to see is just straight nonsense that I'm not feeling. Jordan. Why are they wasting this character and this actress? Why? Why are they wasting her? Jordan is gorgeous, successful, smart, fabulous. Why are they wait why are they wasting her time? Why are they wasting the actress's time with this drivel? Like this the only time we ever get to see her is when she's talking to Laura about Heather Weber and this whole how this can affect her job and then you talking to Drew about him running for Congress. Why do they keep bringing her out to be a prop? That's all they keep bringing her out for. I'm like, what is the point in making the actress get up in the damn morning, drive to the studio at five, six in the morning just to film this bullshit? It wouldn't for me. It wouldn't be worth my time. I'm pretty sure the dialogue on her script is probably half a page. I'm just saying, like, cause I, this is what y'all bring her out for. This nonsense. Don't nobody care about Drew and his little campaign. And what pisses me off is the fact that this idiot, after everything Monica has said to him when he came back, you know, back in like what 2021 when Jason and Britt saved his ass or whatever, and you know Monica pretty much told him, "You are my son." That right there should have been the catalyst for him to decide, you know what, let me change my name to Quarterman. He had so many instances and good reasons to change his name to Quarterman years ago. And you choose now for political reasons? That's what bothers me. Because I'm like, so you don't want to change your name because you don't want to feel closer to your dad that you never got to meet? You don't want to feel closer to the grandparents that you never got to know? You know what I'm saying? Only reason you want that name is because of the power that it holds. That can help you. That can benefit you. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> he really is. I'm like, that's the only reason to change your name to that name. That is crazy. That is crazy. That is weird. Um, Do I feel like Drew would be a good congressman? Nope. I'm pretty sure this opponent that everybody speaks so negatively about... I'm pretty sure she would do a better job than him. I'm pretty sure a donkey's ass would do a better job than him. I'm just saying. Keeping it, I'm just keeping it real. I got to be 100 about it. Um, I don't have no confidence in Drew as a leader in anything. Not even his leadership and deception. Only thing I liked that he did was that stupid ass budget that Nina tried to get over for Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> That's the only thing I agreed with. I said, no, we're going to trim that budget because as a businessman, it's like, first of all, if you pay attention to business that's going on today, media companies are slashing their budgets across the damn board. OK, nobody's putting all this money out into these companies no more. They are slack. Look at CNN. They barely keeping the damn lights on over in that motherfucker. So <laughs> we're not about to send no whole team to Paris for fashion. Who paying for that? And, and all y'all motherfuckers think y'all about to get first class? Y'all not even getting business class. Listen, I would just send the editor-in-chief and two photographers and y'all motherfuckers gonna go on the Greyhound bus. That's all y'all gonna get out of me. You ain't getting no damn plane ticket out of me. And hotel accommodate. Listen, you are getting a Greyhound bus and you better hope they got a Motel 6 over in that motherfucker. Because that's what you're gonna get from me. Bus ticket in the Motel 6. Or the, or the Motel 8 by Wyndham. That's what you're gonna get from me. Please, ain't nobody about to spend all this coin on y'all just to go to no damn Paris Fashion Week with them horrible fashions. We're not doing it. No, I wish I would waste my company money on that. You crazy as hell. And Nina want to go so much. I'm like, well, Nina, you can pay for your own damn self to go. You got you got coins. You got Skrilla. You can go. As far as the rest of the staff that's on my payroll, y'all want to trade y'all salary for this trip. 
Because that's what it's going to cost you. I will take from your salary to pay for this. You better go ahead. And please, we, we crunching numbers like we, we stretching that penny. We ain't got time for this. Ain't nobody spending no money on no damn Paris Fashion Week. You better go ahead. Get out of here with that nonsense. And Nina need to get off her knees and stop kissing this man's ass. Oh, I can even be your campaign manager. Oh, I can use the invader to help you. Oh, I'm going to go all in to make sure that you're, you're elected. Nina, you already have access to Willow. Okay? You got your job back at Crimson. He approved your brand new budget. And I see she went and slashed that budget real damn quick, too. Soon as he told her no, she went back and revised that shit. I said, yeah, good job. Revise. Um, Come back with some numbers that make sense. You got your new budget. It's like, why are you kissing this man ass so tough? Campaign manager running ass through through Crimson or in the Invader and all that. I'm like, ain't this the same man that you claim you hate? I guess the little 60 seconds worth of dick was good enough to make you hop and jump and skip for this man. I guess. Lord. I'm talking about that. How long he said it was fucking? 40 minutes. Please. That 40 minutes wasn't nothing but foreplay. Um, ooh, Nina. All he did was kiss her on the neck and probably fondle her with a little feather or something. That That's all the sex they done had. And then that little one minute was the actual sex. Better go ahead. So basically, it was 39 minutes. Um, no, it was one minute of sex and the other 39 was all foreplay. He better go on with that mess. Um, but yeah, she doing want too much. Talking about helping him and all this. Oh, please, Nina. Get, stop groveling to that man. Please stop it. Because they act like they don't want each other, but we all know they do. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Another pain in my ass, Natalia. I was so annoyed that they still sitting there talking about this new contract. I'm like, what in the entire fuck? Why are we still talking about this contract? Like, let, let me be very clear. Before, matter of fact, before I be clear, let me just say this. She's sitting here talking about she want this, she want that. So, they did everything in their power to revise this new contract for Blaze. And I get it. As a, as a manager, as a business manager, you want to make sure your client is getting the best of the best. I can get that. Um, They revised it to whatever she wanted them to revise it to. And here she goes still bitching. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't agree to this. Not video interviews. Ma'am, your daughter is the co-face of Deception. She's going to have to fucking do interviews, including video ones. It's a part of the damn job. Let me be clear. Okay. I need Natalia to know this. First of all, her daughter is not Jennifer Lopez. Her daughter is not Shakira. Her daughter ain't even Lady Gaga. Okay. Your daughter are none of these people. Why does she think her daughter needs all of these luxuries in her contract? Like, all I'm hearing from Natalia is my daughter not doing this, my daughter not doing that, my daughter not doing this. Bitch, your daughter ain't about to have a job. You keep telling me no. Like, first of all, see, this is why I need to run Deception. Because I feel like, Ma I love Maxie and them, but I feel like they too soft. Because I need badass Maxie. I don't give a damn. If Lois is doing the bulk of the work as the face of, de of, de uh, uh, of Deception, why are they giving Blaze this nice-ass contract? Why? What does Lois's contract say? And you know, that's what I love about Lois. Cause I'm pretty sure she ain't got all these crazy ass demands. I know she don't. But Blaze is sitting over here thinking she fucking Marilyn Monroe. I ain't even going to say Blaze. I'm going to say her mama. Because this is mostly her doing. Like, get on some damn way. Your daughter is not pop diva. She, she's not Gwen Stefani. She ain't none of these people. Okay, she ain't on the stage like Beyonce shaking her tail feather. She ain't none of these folk. Those the type of folks that could ask for big money and all this stuff. Listen, Beyonce could walk in that bitch right now and tell her, listen, I want Eminem, the big bowl of Eminem's, and they all better be orange. And she could get it. She could sit right there and ask them for half of that company right now and could get it. <laughs> Blaze, all you gonna get is a free gym membership. Whichever gym you want and $5, you better go on somewhere in a coupon to any little restaurant. Matter of fact, we're going to give you a coupon two for one at the Red Lobster because clearly they need some business since they're going out of business. That's that's the best contract offer your ass going to get from me. I'm just saying like, because Natalia worked every little bit of my nerve in that meeting. 
Um, Lucy, speaking of working the nerve, Lord, Lucy. Mm. <laughs> Lucy is just so narcissist, just a huge narcissist. Like, she swear everything was her idea, and she's the smartest one in the room. I'm like, Lucy, go sit down somewhere, because you were horrible as the face of deception. <laughs> When in that talk show talk about the nurses boy talked about everything except the damn product. Like <laughs> I was looking at Lucy like, ma'am, why are you even in this meeting? And then got the nerve the question low, oh, what's more important than BLQ's job? Why she can't be here? Lucy, mind your business. Mind your business. Mind your business. And ain't none of your damn business why she not there. You ain't even technically the boss. You ain't the boss no more. I don't even know why Tracy even keep her there, honestly. I'm surprised Casey, uh, Tracy keeps her employed. I'm shocked. Because I would have been thought Tracy would have fired that ass. Because Lord knows I would have. Because I love Lucy. That's my boo. But uh-uh. No. No, sir. Um. Oh. Before I even forget. Madam Alexis. Um. Nina done lost her damn mind. When Nina took over the invader, how did she not know that Alexis didn't have an employment contract? I would think when people take over a company, that's one of the first things that they do is look up their employees. Like what the contracts say, what, you know, like what are the benefits? What are they getting? What, you know what I'm saying? Like what's the points of their contract? She didn't look at none of that shit. Like she literally did not know. I'm like, Nina, what type of business woman are you? You did not know your editor-in-chief did not have an employee contract. What? <laughs> what type of internet business is <laughs> If I was Drew, I would have just fired her ass. Because, no. Uh-uh. If you can't handle Invader, you ain't going to handle Crimson. Because absolutely fucking not. Like, what? That's like business 101. Like, how you don't just come in there and just sit through the contracts? You ain't got that but that much employees working at the damn company. You couldn't take five minutes to look at what, what, what they get. And as editor or publisher of The Invader, shouldn't you know what her pay is like? Wouldn't you want to know what her pay is like? I'm just saying, like, damn. You ain't look at none of that? Ooh. They just made her look so incompetent for that. <laughs> you mean to tell me Alexis just been getting a check from them and they had no type of employment contract? Lord have mercy. Lord. Shut that whole company down. <laughs> what the hell? Nina. That, that is so amateur. She got, she had the nerve to say you can't quit because you have a contract. Apparently not, madam. Apparently she don't, ma'am. She, she been working under the table this whole time. I'm like, you didn't know? I got to sit in silence for a minute. I do I really have to like sit in silence on that like how you didn't know like what uh, uh let, let me move on from that because that that just pissed me off even further like what um so anyway I'm not surprised that Nina made a beeline to um promote adrian as the new editor-in-chief of, of, of the um invader i'm not shocked because you know he's looking forward to it ava ava messy as hell listen somebody gonna slap the shit out of ava one day <laughs> she messy she could not wait to send that damn um audio to um adrian and i'm glad she did i am so glad she did because maxi phone was going off and that whole meeting, all you hear was ping, 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 ping. I'm like, well, damn, who blowing your ass up? I, at first, when I kept hearing it, I said, well, damn, is that Spinelli trying to get him a little little quickie? Like, damn. But nah, that's her alerts. Natalia in trouble. I am so glad that Ava actually put that audio out there because now 
this I feel like it's going to jeopardize the hell out of Blaze's career. Blaze ain't going to have no choice but to fire her mother. She ain't going to have no choice because once they play that audio and everybody hear how homophobic she is and how she talked about Blaze and how she talked about Christina. Listen, you, mm -mm. ain't nobody in that town going to want to mess with her. <laughs> nobody in the LGBTQ community going to want to fuck with her. I'm just saying, like, Blaze ain't going to have no choice but to cut the cord on that. If you want a career, cut that. Nope. Ain't going to work. But Natalia's still handling Blaze's business. Ain't no way. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be sometimes where you're dealing with vendors and stuff who are, you know, a part of the LGBTQ. And they see Blaze's mama there. They're going to be like, nope. Mm -mm, we're not doing business. Like, stuff like that can definitely negatively impact the new career. Like, absolutely not. Especially Deception. Her being the co-face. Like, that's going to have a hell of an impact on it, especially for what they, you know, for what Deception's, you know, goals are for what their brand represents. You know what I mean? That's not a good look. That's going to dip their numbers. Like, they're going to have to cut them loose. Um, look like that contract might be tore up. Um, I don't like this, though, what they're trying to do to Ava and Trina's relationship. I don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, now Ava want her to snoop on Sonny and stuff and use her friendship to Jocelyn to get information that could help her custody case. I don't like it that she involving her in that. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? Trina wasn't lying, you know, when she said, oh, Jocelyn never talks about Sonny to me. She don't tell me nothing. I feel like after that, Trina really need to go and reevaluate her friendship with Jocelyn. She really need to reevaluate because I've been saying this for the longest that their friendship is very one sided. Trina confides in Jocelyn all the time about her personal stuff and what's going on with her. Jocelyn tells her bare minimum. You know what I'm saying? That's not a friendship to me. Like how, how you know all this information about me, but I know very minimum about you and what's going on in your life. Like that don't work for me. That wouldn't work for me. Like absolutely not. You're not going to sit here and play me out and I don't know shit about your life, but you know everything about mine. That's not a friendship. Absolutely not. Um, But I definitely feel like Trina just need to stay out of that. Like she need to stay out of that war between Sonny and Ava because I'm telling you, it's going to get ugly. I ain't even mad at Trina for adding Geo name to the to the program or whatever for the for the exhibit or whatever. I'm glad she did because... I mean, the boy is a good violinist, you know what I'm saying? And he is going to be playing by himself, you know, for a bunch of people. His name should be on the damn program. You know what I'm saying? It should be on the flyer. How, you know Ava ain't put that boy name up there. I'm glad Trina added it. I said that was nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, not only is this woman paying him $100, but you ain't even going to put that boy name in the program? Uh. Uh. Like, Damn. <laughs> I mean, if this wasn't such a huge opportunity for Gio, if I was Gio, I would probably would have backed out of this. Like, I'm getting paid bare minimum, and my name don't even make it up on the paper. <laughs> Ava ain't <she. laughs> I'm telling you, Ava, don't she trifling for that one, though. You can at least put that boy name up there now. At least. Trifling. Um... I am glad, though, that Jocelyn and Sonny had that conversation. Cause I do feel like Jocelyn need to keep her mouth shut where Gio is concerned. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that Jocelyn finally turned in a corner on that because it's not her place to keep being on this rampage about Sonny every five minutes to anybody that will listen. It's like sometimes you got to let people see shit for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like same way Christina had to see it. Even though that's stupid because we all know Christina been seen that shit 15 years ago, but I'd guess. But, you know, Gio need to see it for himself, you know? And if he still feel like he want to rock with Sonny even after seeing that dark side of him, then that's on that boy. But other than that, I will let people deal with people how they want to. You know what I'm saying? When you see that ugly side, that's on you. I ain't about to be the one to say, oh, I put the bug in your ear and that's how you knew. Nope, I don't want to be a part of that. Um... Sonny know he trifling because for one, how you going to sit here talking about, oh, when I slammed that door in your face, that meant I didn't want to see you anywhere ever. Sir, y'all have a child together. Y'all live in the same small town together. You're going to see her whether you like it or not. And if you didn't want to see Ava at all, then maybe 10 years ago, you shouldn't have stuck your Italian sausage in her and had crip sex. Had you not done that, you wouldn't have to really look at her like that. She wouldn't be one of your baby mamas. 
Next time, keep your Italian wing wing in your pants. And we'll be all right. See, he don't understand that dingaling of his get him in trouble every single time. And he don't understand that. Because you be sitting right here having children with people you ain't got no business having children with. That's on your stupid ass. So, for me, I don't feel bad that Ava gonna give him some hell. I don't feel bad. That's Listen, that's on you. That's karma. Stop having sex on people's grave. <laughs> that's your karma. Um... Because Ava, I love that Ava turned out to be a bad bitch again, though. I love it. Because before, she was acting so wimpy with Sunny and stuff like that. I'm glad that she got her claws back. You know, she pulled out the claws again. She was like, oh, you must have forgot who I am. She said, you know what I'm capable of. I said, go the hell off, Ava. Oh, this is going to be good. I said, go off, Ava. Go off on his ass. He was like, oh, you threatening me? Nah, bitch, it ain't no threat. It's a promise. Because we all know how Ava get down. <laughs> oh, we know. You know what I'm saying? Ava ain't no joke when she really, when you take her there, she ain't no joke. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Christina. Why it look like that baby bump grew in the last day or so? Like that baby bump look like it got a little bigger. I'm so over her. Like I get it. Her emotions are all over the place. Like her hormones. I get it. But for Alexis to sit there and coddle her. Oh, I'm proud of you. Listen, she knew damn well when she got into this, what it was going to be. She knew she had one job. Carry that baby to term, give birth, hand it off to the parents. She knew that. Now she want to renege. Like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. And I get it. It's the hormones. Some of it is the hormones, you know, because the body can't tell the difference and whatever. I ain't going to say it's not. But. Christina know damn well she done fell in love with that child and she gonna have a hard time giving it up. And she know it because why are you drafting up legal documents? And now you're talking about taking maternity leave. Why would you need a maternity leave? You just push the little sucker out, give it to the parents, and you can go back on about your damn business. You can open up your little center. You don't need no maternity leave. It ain't your child. Technically. Biologically, sure. But technically, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, what type of foolishness are you on? They handing people their child that you promise, or it's gonna be nuck if you buck. I'm telling you, because <laughs> if I was Molly and TJ, I'd be like, nah, fuck that. We went through nine months of this. Nope, you promised us a kid. You gonna give us what you promised? I ain't even mad at it. Because if not, we gonna roll up them sleeves. It's gonna be nuck if you buck up in here. Because hell no, you gonna get me. Um, I think that's pretty much everything in this episode. But anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.